Okay, we're getting started on time today. I've got the camera facing the right way. It's a little too close. If you're just tuning in or if you're watching this after the fact, it takes me about two minutes to get everything set up here, so just bear with me. If you're live in the chat right now, let me know if you can hear me. Uh, super stoked to be talking about the Switchblade and the Rascal. Um, I've had these bikes for like two weeks. It's just been so much fun. Let me see if people can hear me. If you're just joining the chat right now, maybe uh, let me know you're here and uh, let's see here. And tell me where you're from. Let's see here. Okay. Trailblazer says he's here. You guys can hear me. Dell says you can hear me. All right, Alex, thank you. Santa Monica. All right, California, Canada. Uh, Traveled no trail in Denver. What's up, dude? Bill? Our moderator, what's up, my man? Uh, Dave says you can hear me loud and clear. We're just going to give it a few more minutes, let some people trickle in here. Um, so if you're watching this after the fact, or, or not live, that is, then uh, it's going to take us about two minutes before we start talking about the bikes um, and answering any questions that you have. Uh, man, just chit-chatting real quick, man. I've had these bikes in my house for like two weeks, and it has been so much fun riding these bikes back to back, back and forth. Um, compare them against my Ripley a little bit too. Um, I had the, the Ritmo, the V2 Ritmo at my house for a little bit. I've just been comparing a ton of different bikes and it's been a lot of fun. Um, again, as per the usual, I know it's backwards. I don't know how to film on my can. I just use my phone to film these live streams because I don't know how else to do it. So it's backwards. Oh wait, maybe it's not backwards. It looks okay. All right, that's good. It's, it's okay for you guys, it's backwards. When I look at it on my, uh, on my camera, I should pay attention to that. Anyway, when the Coco Joy is gone, uh, we'll wrap up the live stream, but man, if you've not had coconut water from Coco Joy, it's the best. And they give us a discount because they're kind of sponsoring the channel. So use the promo code in the link down in the description. Uh, the promo code is yum yum at checkout at Coco Joy USA for 25% off, or maybe it's only 20% off or 15%, off. I don't remember what it is. I think it's 15% off. Um, and uh, and you get a, a discount, I think it's 15% off on Coco Joy, sorry, no 25%. And uh, free shipping too. Excellent post-ride recovery drink, has all the electrolytes and everything that you need. All right, let's get this thing started. I could not be more stoked. If, for those of you who watched the, the, the video, the the, uh, the Rascal and the uh, Switchblade video, I've fallen in love with that Rascal. It has been so much fun. We're gonna talk about it in here why. Um, yeah, it's not, it's not quite as capable descending as the Switchblade. It's not quite as good a climbing bike as the Switchblade. So why am I so in love with it? Well, I'll tell you why, guys. Because that's not the end-all be-all. How fast you can go is not the end-all be-all. We get so wrapped up in these geometry numbers and how much travel a bike has and how fast can you go and 29er is faster than 27.5. I mean, these happen to be both 29ers, but still, my point in bringing that up is the Rascal is just a fun bike, man. It is, it's a fun factor of 10 out of 10, which not every bike does that. I mean, I think about some bikes that I've owned that I loved. Um, one, one comes to mind right now is the Pivot Trail 429. I owned that bike and the reason why I bought, bought it is because it felt like a dual slalom 29er, just precision machine. It was so much fun to just hammer on, but it wasn't the same fun factor as a Rascal. That bike was fun because the harder I pedaled on those pedals and the harder I rode that bike, the more I got out of it it was a very, um, it wasn't a very forgiving bike, but I liked that because when I pushed it really hard, it just railed really, really hard, just, just like it was on rails, you know? And uh, this bike, I would say, is the exact opposite of that, you know? It's just a fun factor of 10, and I'm stoked on it. And uh, the Ripley, so for those of you who don't follow my channel entirely, or, or you just, you know, maybe you're just here every once in a while, I currently own an Ibis Ripley, which is 120 mil travel rear, 130 fork, 
Um, it's just a kind of, it's just a good do everything bike and it's a really good climber. Um, and I've had uh, recently in the last you know year or so, I've had an Ibis Ritmo, I've had an Ibis HD5, I've had a Rocky Mountain Instinct PC edition. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I just wanted to get something new that was longer travel than my Ripley and more fun. Um, and that Rascal, it fits the bill for me because I'm going to keep my short travel bike, which I know it's weird to say that my Ripley's my short travel bike at 120 millimeter and the Rascal, when I build it up and get it and all that stuff, that's probably a couple weeks away, but um, it's only 10 millimeter travel, longer travel in the rear. So it's not really like I have a long travel and a short travel bike because that Rascal I know it's only 130 millimeters of travel, but it just feels like it has a ton more travel than the numbers indicate. And we're going to talk about that today. So let me just hop back in the chat real quick. For those of you who are watching this live, um, got some dudes from Idaho. Uh, Dalton Morris says, how are you? I'm doing very good. Thank you. A little stress. Work's been crazy. I, I'm sure you guys are a little stressed too with all this uh, coronavirus stuff. It's just bonkers, man. It's so weird to drive home from my office at, at five o'clock. And the freeway is like, it's like a Sunday afternoon. There's no one on the freeway. It's crazy. Yeah, Steve Smith, you're right. The camera lens is not backwards. I didn't realize that. But when I look at my camera here on my phone, it is backwards. So, uh, all right. We got people all over here. People are already asking questions uh, in the chat. They're saying, uh, you're going to go with the Pike or a Lyric for your Rascal. Uh, cat's out of the bag. I'm getting the Rascal. Uh, what color Rascal? I'm getting the T1000 Rascal, that silverish gray looking one. I'm putting a red Lyric on there at 150 millimeters of travel. It's going to be so sick. I'm so pumped on this bike. Um, this is about the longest I've ever been able to demo a bike before I bought it. So I had the Switchblade and the Rascal. I've had the Rascal at my house now. I still have it sitting here. I've had it for over two weeks now. And the Switchblade, geez, I had that for a week and a half probably, maybe close to two weeks. I'll bet you I've had this Rascal now coming up on three weeks. Wow. I've just ridden the wheels off of this thing and it's been so much fun. Um, so first up, I want to talk about the biggest question I think people had in the uh, chat from the original video, which is why did you not get the Ibis Ritmo? They said, we saw your video of the Switchblade versus the Ritmo, and it sure seemed like you liked the Ritmo better, which I, I, I like the fun factor of the Ritmo. It was more fun than the Switchblade. And uh, if you haven't seen that video, you can go watch it. But uh, the new Ritmo is super cool. There's a couple hangups here. Number one, I've been riding Ibis bikes for a while now. I had the HD4, uh, then I got the Ripley, then I got the HD5. No. Then I got the Ripmo, and then I got the HD5. I still have the Ripley. I just, I'm ready for a different experience. Not that, there's nothing wrong with Ibis. I love them, as you guys know. I think they're some of the best bikes, funnest bikes on the planet. But I'm just ready for something different. And so, uh, and then the other, the other thing is if you want a Ripmo right now, an Ibis Ripmo, you gotta wait till like July to get one. And I'm not in the mood to wait for a bike. It's riding season today. Like right now, the trails are drying out. The lower level trails in my area are drying out. The high mountain, high alpine stuff, it hasn't dried out yet. But uh, yeah, I just, I'm ready to get a bike. So, it, it, you know, it was down to, I demoed the offering, the high tower, uh, uh, the switchblade, obviously, and, and the rascal. Um, I took the stump jumper out again, and uh, which, by the way, I'm going to be demoing a specialized e-bike. The uh, I forget which one it is. The lighter weight one, the Levo LS something. Anyway, so uh, I've been talking to the specialized guys a little bit more, but um, yeah, I, I, I demoed a bunch of bikes, and it kind of came down to me between the switchblade and the rascal. And uh, so now you know what why I didn't choose the Ritmo, even though it's a fun bike super capable bike. I think the Switchblade outguns it in a lot of areas. Um, that's a topic for either later in this discussion or a different day. Um, and then the next question, oh, my original Switchblade video that I did down in St. George, Utah, um, because my trails weren't dried out yet, that was a different bike than the one I've been demoing the last two weeks. So the original video had Fox Live Valve on it. And, uh, 
There's a big difference, oddly enough, between a bike with Fox Live Valve turned off, just not turning the Fox Live Valve on, and the actual bike that doesn't have Fox Live Valve on it at all. There's a big difference. And I greatly, just significantly preferred the, uh, the whole manners and characteristics of the Switchblade without the Fox Live Valve. So for the last week and a half or so, two weeks ago anyway, because that video was filmed a while ago, anyway, um, the, the Switchblade that I've had for the last two weeks has been the non-Fox Live Valve, which I liked a lot better than the original Switchblade that I rode when I made that original video. Sorry, that's getting confusing, but I just wanted to make out that point. I've ridden that Switchblade with and without Fox Live Valve. I prefer it without Fox Live Valve, and most of my references to the Switchblade for this video are from my experience without Fox Live Valve. Um, I, I, just, I don't love it. I know some people love Fox Live Valve. It's just not my cup of tea. All right, before we get back into the chat, um, there's a few other things. I just made some quick notes. I don't always do that for live streams, but I get so off topic so fast on these live streams that I wanted to spend at least the first 10 minutes or so. What are we? Oh, geez, we're already 11 minutes into this thing. I want to spend the first few minutes at least addressing uh, things I really want to talk about. So when it came down to Rascal versus Switchblade for me, number one, the Rascal, I felt really comfortable on both bikes when I sat on them and rode them around the parking lot. But when I was really doing the work, pumping the bike, manual on the bike, just really trying to hang on through those sketchy low traction corners, you know, when your heart rate's elevated and just everything's going on, I felt more at home on the Rascal. Uh, more so than any of the bikes I've demoed in the last month. And uh, jumping, I felt way better on the Rascal than I did a lot of the other bu uh, bikes I've ridden. Um, another thing that I don't talk a lot about on my channel, because um, I just, I don't know if my experience is unique to me or if it's gonna be every bike that I'm demoing, but some bikes are a little noisier than others. I don't know if it's just the way my bike was built, and so I don't mention it all the time in my test ride and review videos. Um, if they're really loud, but the Rascal, I've ridden this bike a number of times now over the last eight months. You know, I rode it last sp summer and last fall also, and it is just a dead quiet bike. The Rascal is silent. It doesn't make a noise, which is really cool. It kind of adds to the experience and it makes you feel more confident because you're not wondering, man, what is that noise when you're just going, uh, there's no, there's no sound it's just dead quiet it's just me the dirt and the hub and that's it when i'm descending and i really like that second of all this bike has been beaten to death i know the people who have been test riding this bike and demoing this bike my buddy sam has spent a lot of time on this rascal that i have sitting here my buddy tyler has absolutely tomahawked this bike down a trail uh did a big old drop and when he dropped he got a pedal strike from some super janky rock rocks and he went over the bars and the bike went down all these rocks it barely has a scratch on the bike the paint on this bike is durable it's just i think in my original rascal video i talked about how this bike just feels expensive and it does everything about it just seems really high quality awesome um easy to move around on the rascal more than a lot of other bikes i've been demoing it has a more sporty feel than some of these longer travel bikes that's because it's a little shorter travel compared to the other bikes I've been demoing in this kind of longer travel 29er category, but it has a more sporty feel, not as sporty as a Yeti SB100 or my Ibis Ripley or like a uh, Pivot Trail 429 or some of these other bikes, but I would say it's as sporty as a Santa Cruz Tallboy. In fact, a lot of the characteristics descending on this bike kind of remind me a little bit of a Santa Cruz Tallboy, honestly. In fact, the next video I wanna make, well, I've got two other videos I'm gonna make before this, but in the next month or so, I wanna make a video, you know, I wanna spend two or three days back to back on a Santa Cruz Tallboy and the Rascal and just kind of get an idea of how close those bikes are. Um, I think that the, the Rascal outguns it on the downhill um, and probably climbing too, we'll see, but I think they're probably more close than I, I originally thought. Last thing before we start talking about the Switchblade more is the CBF, the Canfield Balance Formula. 
it's super active and open and available. Uh, the, the travel feels very available to you. And um, how I said that in the video, and I hope I didn't confuse anyone. I used to use this term a lot when I rode uh, my Rocky Mountain Instinct. Um, the, the suspension when descending feels very open and very active, and the travel feels very available to you to use. And what that means to me, um, and I don't do a very good job describing this in my actual video, so I want to take the opportunity to describe that now, which is um, the travel feeling available to me is when you're hitting a bump and the, and the suspension compacts, I feel like the next bump down the trail, and that, it is a rebound setting, it's setting your rebound faster so it shoots up faster, it's more available all the time, which means I think it has a, a stiffer and more supportive mid-stroke, which I really believe the, um, the CBF uh, suspension has, is a very available, um, excuse me, a very supportive mid-stroke. And so when you push on the bike, it, you get down to the travel and you hit something, the bike doesn't have that hung up feeling like when you like get jarred forward, you know what I'm talking about? Um, maybe I need to make a video about this because I feel like this is a huge component of downhill biking um, and how you get faster at biking is to not get in that position where you're like going clunk over and your chest is coming down toward the bars when you hit, when you hit a rhythm section. But um, I feel like that CBF, the Canfield Balance Formula suspension style is so open, so active, and it's so ready for every subsequent hit along the trail. Um, just doesn't get hang up on the uh, on the descents at all. Like the rearward movement of that rear tire when it hits an obstacle, if this is an obstacle and your tire's coming down like this, I feel like the bike doesn't like get jarred. It just opens up and gets right over very easily. And you might be thinking, well, Jason, that's how all suspension works. Well, yeah, maybe it does, I'm not an engineer, but I'm just telling you from all the bikes that I've ridden, this 130 millimeters of travel feels like it has more travel you know, it feels like it has 145, 150 millimeters of travel. It feels like those bikes that have 145, 150 millimeters of travel, this feels like it's like right there on those descents at really fast speeds. Um, yeah, my last note is it just doesn't get hang, hung up on anything. That's how I feel. Okay, talking about the switchblade now, and then we'll get into the chat and answer questions because we're already 17 minutes into this thing and I want to keep it shorter tonight. Uh, the switchblade. The geometry is perfect. I know that the geometry on the uh, two bikes are very similar, but once I put that 150 uh, Lyric on the Rascal, it's gonna, it's gonna push that seat tube angle back even just a little bit more. It's gonna probably put me down in that 74 and a half degree seat tube angle, which I'm still totally satisfied with. I can just scoot my seat forward just a tad on those rails, but switchblade out of the box, 160, Fox 36, you, you know, out of the box, it's just such a perfect bike. This new switchblade is just, I, I'm not, I'll be a thousand percent honest with you right now. I'm going to buy that bike at some point this year. Um, just because I, I want to spend more time on it. Or I'm just going to just take over Salt Cycle size medium switchblade and just not let them ever demo it because I'm going to take it every time I go ride a janky trail. It's just such a good bike. Um, it climbs all day long. It doesn't matter. I, I switched the rear tire on it to two, uh, two or three different tires and it just, the, the bike just flat out climbs. I think it's the, I know that they spent some time with Fox on that DPX2 shock, uh, developing a specific tune for that bike. Whatever they did, it just is insane. Uh, it feels burly. It feels burlier than the Rascal. It feels burlier than the, the Ritmo. It just feels more substantial and burly. Um, that's cool. Paint job, excellent. DW link suspension, excellent. I mean, everything's so good on this thing. Um, it also has a very natural feel and it has a very easy to ride feel. You don't have to push the bike real hard, which I really like. Um, you, the Rascal, you don't really have to push super hard to have a good time on it either, but the Switchblade, you don't have to pay a lot of attention. You can just casually ride. Most of the time when I'm riding, I'm chasing one of my buddies or my buddies chasing me and I can hear them in my you know, right nipping at my heels right behind me. And so I want to keep pushing faster. And that's a lot of fun. But sometimes you want to just go out and go on a ride. And when you do that, you don't want to be on like a boring, lame bike that's like not that fun. Um, some bikes that, that I've ridden are that way. The Yeti SB130 has to be ridden hard, in my opinion, to have any fun on it. And even then, it's just kind of like, mm, 
meh, you know, it's, it's good, but it's not, there's other bikes that are better in my opinion. And, uh, you know, it's almost like, well, I don't want to get too, too far down, down the road on that, but, um, the switchblade out of the box is easy to ride. You don't have to put a lot of effort or work into it. Um, and the last thing I want to say about the reason why I went with the Rascal um, is it doesn't always come down to which bike is better necessarily. Like I said at the beginning of this live stream, the Switchblade descends better and climbs better than the Rascal. So why am I going with the Rascal? Uh, just a desire for a different bike. You know what? That's the other reason why I'm not getting the Ibis Ritmo. I'm sick of riding the same bike as every single person I see out on the freaking trail, man. You go out in my in my area, you go out and you'll see a million people on Santa Cruz High Towers and Tall Boys and Ibis Ripley's. There's, I see an Ibis Ripley every time I go out there, and I'm fine with that. I just I'm kind of I just want to have have my own bike, my own I don't know. Maybe that sounds crazy to some of you, but I wouldn't just go buy any direct to consumer bike just to have a different bike but the rebel rascal it's different it's unique the suspension style is legit like i've ridden the wheels off this thing and it just it just goes man it just goes and so the fact that it's such a good bike and i'm not going to see every single person out on the trail riding it draws me to it. it makes me want to get it you know uh have some individuality and then i just I think it rides freaking awesome. So I'm stoked on it. Excuse me. All right. That's it. I'm going to hop into the chat now and we're going to answer your questions. We're going to talk about whatever you guys are talking about in the chat here. That's the only hard part about me being in the live stream. When I watch other people's live streams, I get to read the chat and be in the chat more because that's where all the fun is. Um, let's see. I just scrolled up toward the top of the chat, so I'm probably missing something. Okay, people are asking what color Rascal I already talked about, so I'm going to get the T1000 Rascal. Go to, uh, I think it's called RevelBikes.com. Let me look it up. Yeah, it's RevelBikes.com. Go check out their website. They're kind of expensive bikes. They're not even more expensive than like, you know, Pivot or Yeti or Ibis. Actually, I think Ibis might be a little bit less, but um, the other thing is I'm not buying a complete bike. I'm building this bike up from the ground up. I'm going to do full XTR 12 speed, KS Lev carbon dropper post. Anyway, this is a topic for maybe a, a different day. But yeah, so go to rebelbikes.com if you've never checked them out. Where am I at? Here we are. Uh, I'm going to put a red lyric on it. So it's going to be kind of a silverish gray looking bike with a red lyric on there. I think it's going to look so good. Uh, Kurt Robertson says, I love the green color of the Switchblade. It looks so good. I couldn't agree more. That green color is awesome. Again, it doesn't look like every other bike out there on the trail. That's what I liked about it. The blue one looks amazing, but there's a lot of people with blue bikes out there. So, meh. Let's see here. Just reading through these comments here. Um... Kyle says, this is a, uh, this kind of stuff is good break from all the Corona crazy. Yeah, I hope it is. Hopefully we can talk about some cool stuff here for a little bit longer. Um, uh, I'm not following. Oh, e-bikes. Kurt Roberts says, uh, fun e-bikes. I'm getting an e-bike, by the way. I just, uh, I just talked to my buddy Mike who owns a bike shop. I think I'm going to go buy a e-bike from him um okay mike z says do you think either of these bikes i'm assuming he's talking about the switchblade or the rascal are worth getting a five thousand dollar kit or save for the seven thousand dollar option um i have to go look at what they are on their website here's the thing if you're getting a bike with gx or higher or slx or higher group set i'd probably maybe try to spring for xt if you can but um then you're getting a killer group set. GX is just fine. Um, I prefer Shimano 12 speed over uh, uh, SRAM X01 or uh, <laughs> SRAM Eagle. And uh, it's perfect. They're both good. In fact, the two bikes I was riding, the Rascal had X01 on it, and the Switchblade had a uh, 12 speed XT with an XTR rear derailleur, but everything else was XT. And I much preferred the, the, the Shimano drivetrain. Um, you know what? There's huge diminishing returns on bikes beyond $5,000 if they're carbon. So 
you know, it just depends on what type of budget you're in. If you're on a major budget, you can go get a good bike for 3000 bucks. It'll have tubeless ready tires. In fact, they'll probably have it already set up with no tube tubes in there, so it's ready to go. It'll have good brakes, a dropper post, and a decent fork on it. That's about all you need. Uh, again, good disc brakes, uh, hydraulic disc brakes, a decent fork, like a Rhythm, uh, like a Fox 34 or, or Rhythm or better fork. And then um, a dropper post, hopefully a good dropper post. And then uh, tubeless ready uh, wheels that you can set up with good tires. Psh, that's all you really need to get out mountain bike. You know, you're about 2,800 bucks for that or 3,000 bucks for, for, for that. And so that'll get you out biking. But a lot of the people who watch this channel, I mean, I don't do a lot of YouTuber type videos. Like I'm not saying, hey, this is how this Walmart bike rides. So watch my video because I take a Walmart bike down a a trail or something. That's not really my jam here on YouTube. I just demo expensive bikes that if I was going to go buy this expensive bike, I would want to get some information about it. That's why I do the YouTube channel. So most of the people watching this channel, um, the majority of them are willing to spend six, seven, eight thousand dollars on a bike. So, uh, so my answer is get the most expensive bike that you can afford. <laughs> That's what I do because um, they're more fun and like big deal. I mean, I spent $3,000 a year on like kid crap, like soccer and dance and piano and all that crap. And I don't get it. I, I, don't get me started. I don't think bikes, are, they are expensive. It's a little ridiculous, but the reality is you buy a $7,000 bike, you ride it for a whole year. You sell it the next spring for $4,800. It costs you $2,000 for the whole year. I can't take my family boating. Like each winter on skiing, I spend Five six thousand dollars on skiing for the family, so it's like, yeah, it's not that big a deal. Um, so yeah, just get whatever bike you can afford, but you can get away with like, you know, I wouldn't spend less than like twenty eight hundred dollars for like a, a, a bike. If you could only afford two thousand, I would say wait two or three more weeks, save up that extra thousand bucks, and then go get a three thousand dollar bike. Um, uh, Santana says, I say get the Rascal with the Fox 34. Well, that's basically what I'm doing. I'm putting a lyric on there. My buddy Sam owns a Rascal and he has a Fox 36 on there and loves it. Um, let's see here. The Trance is the poor man's Ripley. Is that what I'm saying? I don't know what you guys are saying in the chat right there. Uh, Travel the Narrow Trail says, just got my Ripmo V2 gray and red lyric. Whew. That Star Destroyer gray with a red lyric looks sick. Um, yeah, we're going to be twinners, dude. All right. Let's see here. I'm ordering the Rascal after this video. I was looking for something mid-travel bike, and I think this is it. DTNCTT calls Salt Cycles in Sandy, Utah, and asks for Chris and order up a, a Rascal. Um, they'll probably even build you up a, a, a kit that, that they don't offer. So they offer like... A GX build and the X01 build on their website, but if you call Chris at Salt Cycles, guarantee you for less money or a similar amount of money, he could build you up a Shimano 12 speed, uh, a different fork, different cranks, whatever you want, a specific carbon wheels. Use the, the carbon wheels that I use that they build up. Uh, consider that. Okay, MTB Duffy, which by the way, I just started following you, dude, on Instagram. And I don't know how old you are, but you seem like you're young, MTB Duffy, but uh, it's been fun following you. If you guys don't follow MTB Duffy on Instagram, go check him out. In fact, if you don't follow me on Instagram, go check me out. I don't have any followers on Instagram because I suck at it. Uh, I suck at all the video editing stuff. It's just not my jam. I'm good at the, uh, I'm good. At, I can hear my wife right now telling me, quit talking bad about yourself. My wife's all about positive declarations. We don't say negative things about ourselves. It's not good for you. We have positive affirmations and positive declarations about ourselves, but still I suck at editing. Um, anyway, MTB Duffy does a good job. Follow him on Instagram. Follow me on Instagram and tell your buddies to follow me on Instagram. Maybe I need to do like a giveaway or something. That's what, that's what most of the Instagrammers do. They give away a set of tires or something. Um, Jeff B says, we ordered some Coco Joy pretty freaking good. Dude, so glad to hear. I've tried tons of different coconut waters. They all taste like chemically yucky, gross stuff. This is no added sugar, no preservatives. It's not going to focus and uh, not from concentrate. And it's sweet and delicious. It's not like nappy. 
It's, it's delicious. Although it needs to be cold when you drink it. 15% off, use promo code yum yum at checkout with free shipping. I'm, I'm paid to do that, I guess. All right, let's talk more about the chat. M2B Duffy, I, I got talking about you. Tallboy versus Ripley versus Switchblade. Huh. Well, the Ripley's not in the conversation at all. The Tallboy can actually descend pretty dang good. The Tallboy, it, 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 it could keep up with the Switchblade on most trails. You have to find some pretty janky trails for the Switchblade to really leave the Tallboy in the dust because that Tallboy descends, uh, descends insanely good. Um, so the Ripley's just not quite there in terms of descending at high, high speeds. I can go ride any freaking trail in the world. I can take my Ripley to Whistler or to any other bike park and I could ride it just fine. But I'm not going to be sending those big airs. I mean, technical terrain descending, I could get down. I just got to slow the heck down on the Ripley. Tallboy a little faster, Switchblade, maybe just a little bit faster still. Um, yeah, so Ripley's just not in the same category. And the Tallboy's kind of in that no man's land category also. I'm interested to see how it compares to the Rascal, but the Switchblade's just the next, it's a big bike. Um, yeah, DTNCTT is saying the same thing I am. Switchblade's a different travel bike. I totally agree. It's just, it's just, a, it's just a, another click up. Um, let's see here. Uh, Rick Washburn says, I rode the Yeti SB130 this week. It would be interesting to go head to head with the Revel Rascal. Yeah, it would be, except for that 130 has a pretty harsh racy fill. Um, in terms of speed downhill, the 130, it stays composed enough. Um, I don't want to try that 130 with a bigger fork. And the one that I rode had a Fox 34 on, well, did it have a Fox 36? I have to go back and look at that. I just wasn't super impressed with the 130, so I just rode it for a day and a half and then took it back. Um, oh, uh, Rhino MTB says he's had both the SB130 and the Rascal. Rascal all the way and still have the Rascal. So it sounds like he sold the SB130, hung on to the Rascal, and I would agree. The Rascal is a, a much more fluid, more active and open, you know, just a very smooth uh, feeling um descending bike versus the SB130 is very jarring. Uh, and I, I worked on the setup and I had like two or three guys ride it over the two days that I had it. And uh, we all kind of felt the same way. So um, the Rascal just feels like, and this is going to sound weird too, but the Rascal just feels like when you dump out water and just flows everywhere out of a bucket, that's what it feels like it's doing on the trail. Just like absorbing the trail. It's really bizarre. It's, it's unlike anything I think I've ever felt. It's, it's incredible, which I know that I'm kind of trashing the SB130 here, but the SB150, oddly enough, same Switch Infinity Link suspension, same bike company, you know. The Yeti SB150, it doesn't feel like it gets hung up at all. It doesn't feel like it's too rigid or too stiff um, or jarring, but the SB130, it is. I don't, I don't get it. Let's see here. Um, uh, Rick Washburn says, my, lo my local Revel dealer doesn't get their demo fleet until mid-May. Anxious to ride the Rascal. Yeah. Um, if you have a Rascal dealer uh, coming in town or a Pivot dealer, demo, man, demo the Switchblade, man. If you're looking for a long travel bike, that could be it. Uh, let's see here. Oh, I just missed a huge section of the chat. Um Okay, looks like I'm getting to the part where you guys are talking about e-bikes now. Or maybe I missed something else. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I can't, I can't keep up with the chat completely. I, I end up missing part of it. Um, yes, Salt Cycles carries Revel. They are a Revel dealer, and they can build you a custom Revel. Uh, you don't have to get the X01 build or the GX build that Revel offers on their website. They can help you get any different kind of suspension. Or uh, <laughs> well, yeah, they can help you get different suspension style, but they can also help you with different group set, different brakes, uh, different wheels, dropper posts, whatever. They do custom builds every day of the week. Um, all right. Uh, Dave Farrell says I'm five nine plus, which means maybe he's almost five foot ten. 
uh, and on a Revel size chart, I'm between a medium and a large. Any advice? Um, it's a little shorter bike than the Switchblade was in terms of reach, but my buddy Sam, who's 5'10", has a medium Revel. So whatever that means to you. But he likes his bikes to feel a little smaller. He, he has a BMX background. So yeah, think about that for a little bit. Um, okay, Curtis Roberts says he has a Turbo Lev e-bike. It's awesome. I'm going to be demoing a, a Turbo Lev e-bike, I think, next week. Um, pretty excited about that. Um, which e-bike am I going to get? I think I've narrowed it down to either the, the Pivot Shuttle or to the Rocky Mountain Power Play uh, Instinct. Um, I love the, the Rocky Mountain Instinct so much. And from what I've read up on the uh, motor and everything on the Rocky Mountains, I think they're pretty good. The Pivot Switch Play seems really nice, but it's a little more expensive than, than what I'm looking to spend. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to get the Rocky Mountain. I, I'm, I'm going out of town this weekend uh, for a couple days. When I get back, I'm going to focus on that. And next week, I want to figure, figure out an e-bike because... Um, a, I've got a couple friends who have e-bikes now, and so when they take their recovery days, their easier days, instead of just riding slow or riding on a road bike or taking it easy, instead of going out and hammering the mountain bike, they just hop on an e-bike and just keep their heart rate down, you know, under 130, and they're good. Oh, and we like to go ride super janky trails that are crazy steep, and I'm sick of walking my bike up everything, because you can't walk it, well, you actually end up walking your e-bike up some of this stuff, too, because it's crazy steep, but uh, let's see here. Uh, looks like you guys are talking about different things here. Okay, Bill's making a good point here. Bill says, I think when I, when I was talking about budgeting for a bike, he says, I look at $6,000 for a bike every two to three years. What's the big deal? Exactly. There's not another hobby in the world you can do for less than Fifteen hundred bucks a year, anyway. You think you're going to be a golfer for less than fifteen hundred bucks a year? Green fees are like hundred and twenty bucks a day, dude. Uh, the barrier to entry is kind of high on mountain biking, but after that, it's you know a little bit of tune-ups here and there, some brake pads. It doesn't cost that much to be a mountain biker, and you don't have to pay for a gym membership if you can ride year-round. Um, let's see here. MTB Duffy, you're thirty-five, freak man. I thought you were like a twenty-seven-year-old, twenty-eight-year-old. Um, Jonathan, does Salt Cycles ship bikes? You bet they do, man. They'll ship you a bike anywhere in the country. Maybe even out of the country. Who, who knows? Um, let's see here. Uh, same rule. Hey, Dave Farrell. Yes, yeah, same rule in your house. No negative self-talk. Dude, I don't want to go off on a tangent here because we're supposed to be talking about bikes. But dude, self-love, self-positivity, uh, positive affirmations, positive declarations, uh, you know, that ability to, to, to just will in, in your mind, you can will things into fruition, into happening. Uh, when work's struggling, try to be positive, try to say, I'm going to make that sell or I'm going to close that deal or whatever you guys do for work. I don't know what you guys do, but, um, that, that repetition in your mind, that daily affirmation equals dollar bills. I, guarantee you, or happiness, or whatever you're focused on. I'm just thinking about work. Um, I, I sometimes get negative. I get into a bad headspace, and I just need to pull myself out of the gutter uh, and, and focus on positivity. There's so much power in doing that. It helps your relationships, helps work, helps your kids. Oh my gosh, helps your kids so much. Kids can get negative it's so easy. So anyway, David Farrell, so good to hear that you guys do that too. That's amazing. That's super, super good for you. Um, <clears throat> did I discuss Brady Hall? Uh, he says, did I discuss the weight of the rascal? Yeah, so I had their $7,100 build, like X01, whatever, has an aggressor rear tire, EXO plus casing, and then a DHF front tire. It's just sitting right here, so I'm looking at it. Um, it weighed 30 pounds, two ounces, and the switchblade was the XTR XT Pro build. So, basically an XT build with an XTR rear derailleur. And it was 30 pounds, 14 ounces, basically 31 pounds. Again, EXO plus casing tires, which, excuse me, I'm like all burpy. That's, a, that's stupid, sorry. So uh, there I am not doing good self-talk. Self um, I don't need EXO plus tires. 
basically ever. I mean, I guess I have blown up tires before, but not very often. So I could save a little weight by going to just regular EXO Maxxis tires. Um, let's see. Oh, JDAZMTB says, nice trout on Instagram. Yeah, if you follow me on Instagram, you can watch my stories. You get to see all the fun stuff I'm doing with my family all the time, riding dirt bikes, going fishing, skiing, backcountry skiing, hiking, uh, just folding around the house, building jumps to the house. I just got done building a couple uh, wood ramps uh, for my kids to hit and me to hit and stuff. So that's kind of fun. We're going to St. George, Utah this weekend. Going to go stay down in Entrada and hang out. You'll probably see a bunch of cool stuff on my stories on Instagram there. It's fun. Uh, it's super fun. So uh, yeah, follow me on Instagram. We just, my son just, my son and I, a bunch of us went fishing and on my son's fishing pole, he didn't realize that he caught this big old monster fish. <laughs> There's a 25 inch brown trout on there. Normally we catch like 14 to 16 inch trout that weigh like a pound and a half or so. This was a six and a half pound fish. It was bonkers. Go over to Instagram and check it out. It was just insane. Uh, I was freaking out too because I've fished my whole life. I've never caught a trout that big. I've caught some salmon that big, but nothing like that. That was totally bonkers. Um, Kerwin says, I'd love to see a comparison between the Mega Tower and the Enduro. I haven't ridden the new Specialized Enduro yet. I need to get on that bike. Um, MTB Duffy says he thinks the Ripley would be interesting with the Fox 36 at 140. Yeah, I keep meaning to put a pike on mine at 140. I just haven't done it yet because I'm too lazy. Uh, not too lazy. I'm just too busy riding the Rascal and the Switchblade. I don't know what I've been doing. Um, let's see. I'm trying to catch up in the chat here. Uh, Eric says, sweet e-bike videos next. Yeah, I'm going to do some e-bike videos. I think it'd be cool. Um, let's see here. Demo transition. Uh, sorry, guys. I'm just trying to catch up in the chat right here. Um, yeah, there's over 100 people in here, over 110 people in here. If you haven't hit the like button yet, hit the like button. That always helps uh, helps Google bump it up in the uh, algorithm. Um, uh, okay, this is a good question. Marlo says, does the evil offering fit in this comparison at all? Yeah, I think it does. Um, I, I actually think that that uh, Rascal descends kind of more similar to the way the, the Delta Link... Uh, offering descends actually the offering and the high tower maybe that tall boy even um i would say the rascal kind of descends more like those bikes um which is incredible because those are um those are like incredible descending bikes i, I love them they're as good as they get um but the evil offering is a, a, a bigger filling bike than the rascal i would say a little bit um let's see here MTB trail route with a 499 super chat. Thank you, sir. Uh, thanks for the great content, Jason. Just got the tall boy planning on throwing a 140 pike on for a little more party. Heck yeah, dude. I think a tall boy with a 140 pike would be money. In fact, when I demoed the, the tall boy, I had a Fox 34 on there, but the guy I was riding with, Chris, uh, the, the one of the managers at the bike shop uh, who carries Santa Cruz, he had a pike on his and he loved it. And that guy rails super hard. Um, all right, guys, we're about to wrap this thing up. My Coco Joy is almost expired. Again, if you have not tried Coco Joy, they're offering us 15% off right now and free shipping from CocoJoyUSA.com, I think. I'll have a link in the description of this video. It's in the link of my other videos. But uh, super good stuff. Um to read more about these bikes, click the links in the description down below for the Switchblade and the Rascal. Um, if you have any other last questions about the Switchblade or the Rascal, I'll answer them. I think I covered all the things I want to cover on my notes here. Um, yeah, I just think, I think the Rascal has such a unique feel to it and it's just different than, than every other bike out there on the market. Um, so I'm excited to try something different. Um, how quick does the Rascal pick up speed? I think that's more of a function of tires, honestly. But uh, yeah, if you're, ha it, you know, it, it does fine. I feel like it's maybe a little quicker coming out of a corner than the switchblade. But just to talk more about your question, uh, DTNC TT guy, um, I think 
if, if you guys are looking for a change in your bike or, or maybe you're happy with your bike, but you want to change, grab 120 bucks and go buy two new, two new tires, or maybe even a little less than that. Maybe it's only a hundred bucks for two new tires. I, I don't know, but um, that'll totally change the characteristics of your bike. It might make it feel faster or more traction or just whatever you want to get, what, what changes you want to get out of your bike. Tires makes a huge, I think I got a whole, I got a whole pile of tires sitting over there. Um, swapping out tires makes a big difference. Um, uh, Kevin says you have to go rip, uh, go demo the Ritmo AF. Three thousand is more in people's budget. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people can afford a three thousand dollar bike, and the Ritmo AF looks really cool. I'm actually going to demo it next week. Um, I've already lined it up to demo it next Thursday with Sam. And uh, here's the the only thing, guys, is the Ritmo AF. I could have demoed it a long time ago, but the reason why I didn't is because it's not a bike that I would buy. A and you know, I don't do this channel just for the heck of it. I, 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 I'm riding bikes that I want to ride. And so, you know, YouTube doesn't really pay me a lot of money to do this or hardly anything. It's not worth the time I put into it. It's not worth the money. So if I'm going to do a video, I want to do it on a bike that I'm super interested in riding, not just because people are requesting it. Now, if I'm going to start doing that, then this thing needs to start making money because <laughs> I'm not going to go just ride the AF for the heck of it. But I've had enough requests already, like dozens and dozens of requests. I'm going to ride the Ritmo AF next week and do a video on it. But it's not a bike I would buy because it just doesn't... I like lightweight bikes. It's like a 33-pound bike. Um, another bike that people have been pestering me about, like nonstop, is the Fazari La Salle Peak or La, La Salle Peak. Um, and I'm going to demo that next week also. So I'm just going to get those two bikes done and out of the way, and I'm going to be subjective and have a positive attitude about them, but, uh, it's just not a bike I would buy. So I'm not, I'm not super keen to go out and, and, and demo it, you know, and, and spend all that time making a video for a bike that I know that I'm not interested in. So anyway, I hope that doesn't rub some of you guys the wrong way. I don't want to sound like I don't care about the channel and I care about the viewers because I do, but at the end of the day, I've got a day job and a family and this is pretty low on the priority list. That's why it doesn't get a lot of videos. Um, let's see here, just looking at this. Uh, yeah, Brady Hall's hitting the point right right there. He says, the Ritmo AF is good for the money, but it's like a 35 pound bike with a rear coil. Exactly, that's my point. Is yeah, I mean, a lot of people like Walmart bikes too. And so a lot of other YouTuber, uh, mount, like mountain bike category YouTubers go ride Walmart bikes, but like, it's just for the views here on YouTube. That's, I mean, I mean, I guess that's important to me because I want this thing to, to make enough money to make it worth it for me to do. And how you get that is by views and ad revenue. But uh, regardless, at the end of the day, I'm not going to do that crap. It's not, that's not really what I'm doing here on YouTube. Um, I'm an actual mountain biker who's been riding a mountain bike for 25 years. Uh, and, and yeah, I don't, I don't do Walmart videos. Anyway, sorry. Uh, let's see here. Oh, that's the other thing. Revel Rail is, the, the Rail is in town right now. So Salt Cycles doesn't have a Revel Rail demo bike, but Revel, the company in Colorado, just sent one to Salt Cycles and it's here for two weeks. So in the next week or so, I'm going to be demoing the rail also, which I'm super excited about. Kurt Bert Robertson says he can't do the Fazari just because of the name. Why not call it Famborghini? Yeah, Fazari kind of sounds like Ferrari. I don't know. It took a while. So Fazari is a local company, and it took a while for that stigma of that name. A lot of people didn't like the name at first. But the reality is, is they started out making, I don't think they made their own bikes at first. There's just Chinese carbon bikes, but I know they have at least two bikes that are like legitimate research and development structure, like engineering. They've put a lot of time into building these most two most re recent bikes, the La Salle Peak and the, I guess the Single Peak. My buddy Landon has both of them. And uh, I think they're legit bikes. My buddies who are better riders than me are legit good riders are riding them. So. I think they're, I, I think Fazari is legit, but the, the name is kind of funny and they're super trendy in my area. That's why I don't want to ride one because I see a Fazari every time I go out on a, a ride. Um, okay, last couple questions. I'm going to wrap it up. So uh, 
is the 30 millimeter rim wide enough for 2.6 which yes of course it is um it won't be too round i don't think um let's see here all right why choose these two over a ritmo cult 45 you missed the beginning of our of our chit chat tonight the reason why i chose the switchblade or the rascal over the ritmo which i loved and you guys saw the video and know that is just because i'm looking for a change of pace i've been riding ibis bikes for a while now and i just want to try something different and availability you can't even get a ritmo anywhere in the country till like july so uh you don't suck colt 45 you're all good homie uh and I'm happy to take the, the, the time to tell you. Anyway, uh, that's it for now. I'm getting all stuck here. I gotta take an allergy pill or something. My allergies are getting bad. Um, hope you guys had fun on the live stream tonight. Uh, I don't mind keep doing them. In fact, I don't mind doing one after every single test ride review because there's a lot of things I wanna say in the test ride review videos, but I don't wanna make a 20 minute video or a 25 minute video just because it's painful to watch. So I really try to organize my thoughts and say like the most pertinent information things like during that video, right? Um, so uh, we can keep doing these. I mean, uh, as, long as, as long as people like them and they keep watching them, I'll, I'll do them. It's worth the time to do them, I think. But um, uh, Ryan O MTB says, how's the fence doing? Hey, Marcy? Marcy got out the pressure washer and pressure washed all the fences. Um, so she's ready to paint them. She's putting two different pieces of paint on there, but she's not happy with either color for the fence. So she's got to go figure that out again. And I'm not much help, unfortunately. Um, Trailblazer says he's in Idaho and he got allergies too. Dude, I've, I've had allergies so bad the last week and a half. I've had to take like two allergy pills a day. It's been nuts. Um, well, thanks everyone. Um, I hope I got to everyone's questions. If I didn't, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna try to do YouTube more this year. I'm gonna try to do a video a week. I've been saying that for three years and I never do it. Anyway, I hope you guys are doing well through all this coronavirus. Uh, God bless you guys and your families and just your work and, and whatever you're doing, whoever you provide for and um, uh, whoever you need to take care of. I hope you guys can take care of them. Um, I, I know lots of parts of the country are really affected. Utah, it really hasn't been that affected here. Um, you know, we're one of the few states in the United States that did never have a, a closed down or a lockdown order from our governor. I think only six or seven states out of the 50 states remained open. And so all of our businesses have been still been open. You can go to you can go to McDonald's if you want and get some food. You can't go sit down in the restaurant, but you can go through the drive through So everything stayed pretty well open here. Um, and there's still tons of people out on the trails. We are maintaining our six feet, you know, that that um, social distancing. Everyone does a good job of that. And our kids aren't hanging out with like a million different kids in the neighborhood. So we're still maintaining a lot of that stuff. Um, but I still get out and ride. I still go to work every day. Uh, we're just trying to do the same precautions that these other states are doing, but we have not seen nearly the, the troubles that, you know, California, Seattle, Massachusetts, New York, and, and I'm not super up to speed with what everyone's uh, level of, of, you know, problems are. But um, anyway, I just feel so bad for those guys who are struggling. It's just a tough deal. This has been, I just never, this is, I mean, we've never seen anything like this. It's been so bizarre, but um, anyway, I hope you guys are all doing well. Our family's doing well. And, uh, Things are, things are going okay. So I'll send my positive mojo, my positive vibes through YouTube now to you guys so that you guys will be prosperous and happy and your families will be healthy. And uh, anyway, I just wish everybody the best. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one. Let's turn this baby off. Hey, thanks, Bill, for uh, moderating.